Taco. Paint can. Shark. Chainsaw bear. Welcome to Flintstone Talk, the number one rated Flintstone podcast on all the interwebs. <laughs> Flintstones, meet the Flintstones, they're a yabba dabba do family people. They do good stuff and hard oh, work hard, hard, and they always try to make, make time for their kids, but they don't always get to do what they want, because they have families that are busy, and Joe and Dan have relate, because their families ruin their lives, and they hate their fucking families, and if they could just live in Mexico by themselves, they'd be happier Flintstones. Me, <laughs> Flintstones. It's something like that, I think. There's bowling. Bowling? <laughs> bowling. We, oh, you hear this? You start, you're like, we're doing the podcast on the road this week. <laughs> we're driving our cars. <laughs> driving our cars. Uh, it's work today. <laughs> <laughs> this is episode 61 of Is We Dumb. I'm Dan Cummins. I'm Joe Paisley. And also sometimes known as Fred and Barney. <laughs> right. And very excited for today's show. I'm super excited for One Star Heroes because Joe and I both go to this place and have different takes on it. <laughs> this, uh, the lady who works at Tacos Reneso yep. on Sherman in uh, Coralano likes Joe much more than she likes me. <laughs> but she does hate a lot of other people besides me. <laughs> and I can't wait to fucking let her have it. I mean, she hates She's a me monster. too. She's she a monster. She hates me too, and that's why I love her. Like that's the <laughs> <laughs> but she hates you a lot more. She hates me more. <laughs> a lot more. We're going to be sharing dumb things about my family right? uh, early awesome. on in the yeah. show. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like the, the things you went over with me before beforehand uh -huh. sounds very exciting. It's, it's going to be a great show. It's going to be fun. Uh, we are doing Who the What Fuck today, uh, okay. which is fun, which yeah. means we just kind of look into stuff that's not... And maybe I'll do that again. I was thinking about that uh, a couple days ago. Yeah. We haven't done a little breakdown of different bits. The one we're doing today is a little, you know... Uh, off from the, the normal OG layout. Okay, okay. But I, I might, throughout today's show, explain what each segment is kind of representing. Okay. This is what people know. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. Because we haven't really explained uh, yeah, it in a while. Good reset. It's, it's probably been like f five years. It's been 17 years. It's been 17 years. Uh, if I recall correctly, the last time we properly set the show <laughs> was, it would have been 2004. Uh -huh. And we had just started. <laughs> <laughs> it, we've ju okay. And just to give you an idea of how well the show's, we just crossed 60. <laughs> So we, you know, there's, there was delays, <laughs> right? There was life, life stuff came up. Yeah. Like five shows a year. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you <laughs> take six, seven months off. To <laughs> Life's get, busy. To you get... are, you mentioned that in the theme today, the right. theme song, the Flintstones theme it's song. It's fucking but kids. Family's kind of busy and their families ruining their family. life all the oh, time. Right. And making everything we do, things we hate, <laughs> going to stupid concerts instead of hanging out on a beach, beach. you know, right. Yeah. <laughs> Instead of I'm gonna drive this car, off, I'm gonna run this car off a cliff. <laughs> <laughs> you can see her. Smash. That'd be the worst. That'd be the worst Thelma and Louise. <laughs> yeah. It was Fred, Fred and Barney Flintstone. <laughs> they just like can't get enough foot traction to get like the speed high enough to actually throw themselves, shoot themselves into the canyon. <laughs> they just keep getting like stuck in their heavy ass fucking Flintstone car, <laughs> bouncing <laughs> over the, just tilting on the edge. Lean forward. Oh, I'm trying, Barney. Forward, I'm trying to die. <laughs> Uh, we do have a new merch announcement, Okay, uh, and it might be a logo of Is We Dumb that you've never seen today. It's just an alternate logo of the show, and if you're watching on YouTube, you can see a picture of it right now, but it's just a logo that nice. we... Nice. Uh, it's not this one. It's not the one that we have right. here. It's mm -hmm. not one that we really mm -hmm. tag or watermark anything with, but it is an alternate logo that kicks ass. I love Stoopy. <laughs> it has Stoopy on the front. Uh, and he's got the brain that looks healthy, mm -hmm. and then he's got the other brain that has ah. flies and a stick in it, mm -hmm. which is Looking. the dumb brain. It's the dumb brain. So it's the, it's the brain, brain we try not to have. <laughs> right. Sometimes they have it, but try not to. We're yeah. trying to be, you know, just somewhere in the middle. And we find a lot of other people who, who have it for entertainment <laughs> value. <laughs> of course. Why, <laughs> why else? <laughs> and they're not our friends. Nope. They're strictly for laughing at mm -hmm. and putting down and degrading. Exactly. They're not real people. <laughs> That's the beautiful thing about strangers. They're not real people. <laughs> they don't have feelings. Fuck they don't them. have feelings. They never, they never have. A lot of people forget that strangers don't have feelings. <laughs> and you can just cart, you have carte blanche <laughs> just to mock them willy nilly. And it doesn't even matter. No. It doesn't count. Never has. Nope. <laughs> the entire They're not. Time. Treat, treat everyone you don't know mm -hmm. like shit. We're all in a simulation. Mm. And you're the star. And those are just, what do they call them? Um, in like Extras. A, no, video games. Are special. NPCs. NPCs. What does that stand for again? <laughs> Non-playable character. Not, thank you. That's exactly what I was thinking of. <laughs> all these strangers, just NPCs. Mm. You know, you can fucking punch them and run off. And if you don't get caught, they're fine. <laughs> 
they, they just reset. They're, they're fodder. Re- mm-hmm, they're fodder in your world. Just just like in um oh my god what was that uh, Red Dead Redemption? <laughs> you know you can just like you can go smack them. And then you leave, and then when you come back the next time, they're there again. <laughs> they're fine. They're still working the cash register. They're still pumping. You know, whatever like a, you did apparently didn't have that big of an no. impact. No. <laughs> a lot of times people think the strangers are like, "Oh, it's a real person," and there's consequences. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Not from what I've read. Not a single time. <laughs> I've never gotten in trouble for like punching or killing I, or driving or like hitting a person in my car. I I <laughs> I said I went into the gas station near here and I fucking I punched them and then I. I ended up tying them up, and I set them on fire, <laughs> and I exploded the whole gas station. Right, and then I just let, and then I went till I couldn't see it anymore. Uh-huh. Drove back around. It's fine, <laughs> just like a video game. It's all back. They were, they were there. And they, they forgot say, was, and, and, and they say the same lines over and over again, just yep. like a video game. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, watch it, buddy. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I walk in here. <laughs> <laughs> like, ah, come on, ah, come on. <laughs> Pew, pew, pew. <laughs> hey, what's the big idea? What's the big idea? Whoa, buddy! Like, you know, <laughs> I love that Red Dead. Yeah. Whoa, buddy! Hey, <laughs> hey! I'm walking here. Why don't you in such a hurry? <laughs> uh, okay, so we have the new T-shirt. If you want to go check it out, buy it. Uh, because if you don't, I, I think if you here picture a family that is not is struggling mm-hmm. and not doing very good, and they're having a real hard time just putting food on the table. Okay. Um, Everyone goes home, like they're they're crying. Mm-hmm. Uh, like daddy's home, but they're all yeah. already crying because life's okay. so miserable. Yeah. So if you don't buy this t-shirt, that's what you wish like on my family. Wow. Mm-hmm. Okay. And Christmas is coming up. Christmas is coming up. And so if you don't buy anything and my kids are crying, they don't have any mm-hmm. gifts, it's because you didn't buy the t-shirt. They're gonna, they could die of sadness. Mm-hmm. They will. Your kids won't even make it till next year. <laughs> yeah. You can be like, oh, I'll just get it next year. No, you won't. What happens to Joe's kids? They drown from their own tears. Mm-hmm. Our they- whole house is waterproof. <laughs> like we just sealed it off mm-hmm. for this exact situation to make you feel bad for not buying sh- shirts. I just, I just picture then there's like six inches of space left between like the their <laughs> tears and then the ceiling. <laughs> and you're just like, stop crying or you're going to go, no one bought the t-shirts. <laughs> he never did. They never will. <laughs> <laughs> Make better t-shirts, Daddy. Nobody wants them. <laughs> uh, check them out right now. Badmagicmerch.com or go to iswedumb.com. Let's get the juices flowing. You Let's ready? Do it. Zach, you push the button. We'll do the thing. The very super most important starting question. <laughs> Dummy Bob. Would Bobby. you rather randomly encounter a different home alone trap one time <laughs> every day Funny. Or have to mow your lawn by hand using only scissors. <laughs> oh, this is a good one. <laughs> it's a great this one. This is clever. Uh-huh. Oh, man. And, and I and think, there. I mean, if you look at this on the surface, there's a lot of loopholes, yeah. right? You'd be like, okay, cool. I'll just I'll take out all my grass and I won't have a lawn. Mm. Fine. But let's just lock it in. Yeah, you have uh, to have a lawn. We are both in our, our current situations. Got it. Our we properties. Have lawns. We have they're, lawns. Not, they're not gigantic. No. But they're still but enough. They're not tiny. You're not going to, there's going to be a problem. They're North Idaho lawn. Mm. You got it. And if you and if you're one of the two people that hasn't watched Home Alone or isn't familiar with the the concept of Home Alone booby traps, skip ahead ten minutes. We'll be out of here. <laughs> like this <laughs> next segment has to be coming up in about ten minutes. Uh, and also, it's it's just like standard. Like it's just like crazy things. Like um, uh, a bowling ball all of a sudden comes off. Of a, it's like attached to a string, and you like turn around to walk up the stairs, and it like knocks you off the railing, <laughs> slams into your chest, like those kind of things. Or you the classic you sl- the, the the paint cans from the strings. Yep, paint can into the, to the face. Uh, tool chest falling down the stairs, mm, slipping on a bunch of marbles, <laughs> la- landing on a bunch of tacks. That was the sound of a tool chest coming down your stairs. <laughs> if you know that part, you know that part. If not, go fuck yourself. Hot iron to the forehead. <laughs> wow, yeah. what a hole. <laughs> That's also <laughs> just yelling out Black fucking <laughs> Home Alone quotes. So bad, like like pranks that they're, they're gonna leave a mark. Mm-hmm. It's gonna hurt. But also in that movie, those guys never got their faces busted up. So you also kind of have that cartoon <laughs> well, yeah. resilience to it, right? I mean, they did get hit in bricks from like the top of a three story building, and they were, and they were okay. but their nose is fine. The next scene, right? Kind of exactly. like a video game, mm-hmm. like the video game, right? Because because they're strangers. <laughs> they're, no, but these are not NPCs. I are, guess it's, they're not. They're the main they're characters. The main characters. <laughs> but to Macaulay Culkin's character, he doesn't know. No, yeah, they're NPCs. Yeah, no so worries. If he would have hurt his family, they'd go to the hospital. Mm-hmm. But it's just some bad guys trying to get in his house, so it doesn't even matter. <laughs> exactly. Um, so, yeah, so bad pranks that are going to hurt real bad. Fame fl- or like a flamethrower on your head mm-hmm. when you walk through the door. Gonna after your hair off. Like wrenches hit you in the face. Right. Stuff like that. You're going to be okay. You're going to be okay. You're not going to die. You're not going to have, you know, like, you're not going to be maimed for life, but it's going to fucking hurt. And it's <laughs> going to be every day. And randomly. And you don't know when. You could be walking into work. Yeah. And it's just going to be so clever because you're going to get uh, better and better at avoiding these traps. And the traps are just going to get better and better at fucking you up. I will say, if I could wish this on someone else, I would for sure, like, if it's someone I didn't really care for, 
100% wish the pranks on them. Uh-huh. Like, like, like if I was working in an office and there was a coworker I didn't like and I could pick him to either have to mow his whole yard by, <laughs> by hand with scissors every week or get fucking smashed once a day and not know when it was going to happen, for sure I'd want him to get smashed. Because <laughs> it'd be so entertaining to he see how skittish he is. Smashed yet? Right. No. And sometimes you get smashed at work. That's what your ideal situation. God, that'd be the best. <laughs> you have a whole TV network <laughs> right. based off this dude. He just follows him around and waits for the next prank. Can you imagine like going to lunch with somebody like that? Like sometimes it's going to happen at lunch. How entertaining <laughs> that would be. If you're like, you're like in the elevator, just uh-huh. like heading down to the main floor to like, you know, leave your office building to go for lunch. And then just like a fucking panel falls out. And like, I don't know, there's like a clown up there. And like, and it just fucking punches him in the face. And it gets out on some floor. Right. Just like hard. Yes! Explodes his nose. <laughs> oh, you got him! You just hope. Oh shit, Chuck! You invite him to to lunch, to mm-hmm, dinner, mm-hmm. to after dinner. Oh. Like just hoping to be around Barbecues. for when this happens. Dude. Absolutely. Let's, let's go out for drinks. If you know that he hasn't gotten fucking mashed that day, <laughs> let's go out for drinks like on a Friday night, and you just have to hang out till midnight because you know he's going to get fucking destroyed <laughs> eventually but by 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 midnight. It has to fall. It happened that day. Eleven fifty. The anticipation. Eleven fifty eight oh. comes around. You're like, he, oh shit! He's just like running around trying to hide. Like he's in a big wide <laughs> That'd parking be a lot. Terrible life. He's in a big wide parking lot where there's no cars. <laughs> just like, I think I'm okay here. I think I'm okay here. Like, there's nothing near him. And then just a fucking meteorite. <laughs> right. Just pelts him. N- knocks him unconscious. He starts walking back thinking he's safe. And Macaulay Culkin, like, puts some pearls on the ground like he did in the movie. And yep. Whoa! <laughs> Brad, I think Brad is Home Alone character. Oh, yeah. Whoa! <laughs> uh, okay, so that. Okay. Or... Seriously, with the scissor situation with the take lawn, forever. it takes forever. Plus, it's never going to be done. Like, Mm-mm. I mean, could you actually do it in a day if you buckled down and scissor cut <sighs> your fucking lawn? Or by the time you're done, it's going to be so long you just have to go cut it again. And is there a loophole? And assuming you just, that you just don't ever do it, right? You just you just stop caring about your lawn, and then you're the neighbor that everyone else in the neighborhood HOA. hates. Okay, HOA. Oh, okay, let's now put you that. I, I know. Again, I said there's going to be loopholes with the scissor right. shit. So how about mm-hmm. you have to do it? Okay, you have to do you it. You have to okay, do that, your that lawn. Okay, that makes it uh, harder because yeah, there's no getting out of it. You can't just neglect your lawn. You have to do but that. Yeah, I fucking hate lawns now. It's like, Man, no, you get, no, no, no. You get like those, okay, you get those like knee pads. Like you can grab a Home Depot for doing construction work. So you get like the knee pads. Um, it says big, only scissors. Can you set up like a scissor situation where you have like a like giant special scissors? made? <laughs> sure. Even if you have giant scissors, those are fucking heavy to use. <laughs> the ones they have for like ribbon cutting ribbon ceremonies. Cutting. You have to get big <laughs> ribbon cutting shears. You have to get them sharpened probably every week. <laughs> You have, you have a special giant scissor <laughs> sharpener in your garage, <laughs> like just some big ass wheel, little grinder, little grind. You have like you're sharpening a fucking sword, <laughs> something you sharpen your. It's an all day thing. It's an exhausting all day thing, once a week. I was thinking like, if could you set up some sort of motorized mm. scissor thing and just turn scissors into a lawnmower? Is that a loophole? That's yeah. a loophole. Just name your name your lawnmower scissors. No, oh. all right, I think it's another loophole. God uh, damn it, Zach! Come on, you son of a bitch. That's what I was thinking. Like, so, okay. You, you have two hands. You get at least two scissors. So one whole <laughs> day of exhausting, horrible work. It's got to be more than a day. Edward this, scissor hands, like all, your whole like lawn. Like a long, for, a 14-hour day. <sighs> all day long out there clipping at least it, one day. Yeah, and in the summer, at least once a week. Unless at least you once have a, a week. fucking nightmare. You, you let do, it grow too long, a little yeah. bit. Oh, You do get to take the winter off. So yeah, that is nice. That's true. Up here, at least. Up here, at least, you get to enjoy the whole winter of not getting fucking smashed once a day <laughs> by a bad prank. Mm. As bad as it is, I think I, I... You still get smashed in the... Yeah, you still get smashed every day by a right, prank. Right, exactly. That's oh, what I'm saying. Oh, I said enjoy would not have to have no, that happen. No, if you pick the scissors. Oh, gotcha. If you pick the scissors, okay. then you get to relax all winter, not scissoring your yard. <laughs> and uh, now I'm just picturing two women with their, <laughs> I just their vaginas fucking out in your yard, just <laughs> smashed up against each other. They're, they're, they're mowing your their lawn or mowing your lawn with their vagina? Could you do that? Is that a loophole? Could you get two women to somehow... <laughs> Just making your blades pull all, up, all wet. Pull up the grass <laughs> blade by blade by like pushing, like by pinching a blade of grass <laughs> in between their vaginas and then kind of like with their hips popping up to like pull the grass out. In okay, case so it's gonna be bad. You know how you, <laughs> you know how you can put a blade of glass or a blade of grass between your thumbs? Mm-hmm. Make yes. Like the, yep, yep. Like make that crazy whoo- whistle noise. The whistle noise? Yeah. Picture that, but like now with vaginas. Oh, no, with vaginas. Like a queef is oh the one God. that whistles. Not everybody knows about that whistle. Ah, I forgot about just, that. Is it like a you hold it between outdoorsy your, thing? Yeah. Yeah, you hold a blade of grass. If you don't know, get a big blade of grass if you want to annoy the shit out of everyone around you. That's like big crab grass, not normal tiny dumb yeah, like, grass. Like, yeah, like uh, that thicker grass. Mm-hmm. And then you just kind of make a slit in the middle, but it can't tear all the way through. It's a little slit in the middle. And then you just pin it between your thumbs 
and you blow that tiny little space in between your thumbs with the grasses, and if you get it right, it's so loud and annoying. <laughs> yeah, it's so annoying. Eventually, mm-hmm. it'll break, mm-hmm. but it is fun until it, it is, does. It is fun until it does. So anyway, there's that trick. Couldn't you just move to Greenland or Siberia? Yeah, well, you well, not, could for, get, not for Joe and I, because we think that we, we have, have to be to here. Stay. We have to stay in our house. Damn it. All right. I'm a dummy. Bye-bye. You you have to stay exactly where you're at. I'm going to pick the grass because with the existing rules, it's seasonal. It's going to suck. I'm going to hate it. But I get to relax for part of the year, and you never get to relax. That's the worst part. Actually, the only only way you get to relax with the pranks is if you get smashed early in the day, (laughs) and then you know at least the rest of that day, you're not going to get hurt again. If you wake up and get hit in the face with a crowbar, you're like, okay, great. It's a great day. (laughs) Great. The best. Oh damn! I, I got 23, 23 hours and mm-hmm. fifty minutes the, before yeah, a crowbar or anything else gonna hit me. The absolute best would be just right after a tick after midnight. <laughs> you get woken up by just getting fucking smashed or stabbed or poked, burnt <laughs> something, and then you like you wake up in pain. But you're like, okay, once I go back to sleep after the pain goes away, <laughs> then I get to wake up and enjoy the whole day of not getting burnt or stabbed or hit again. What a day! What a day! <laughs> what a life! Baby, we're going out to dinner. Baby, let's celebrate. <laughs> I want to. I want to enjoy a nice steak dinner. I want to make love. I want to have all these things, and then sure, I'll go to bed knowing that tomorrow will be fucking horrific. All right, but today, today, it's a good day. I've already been burnt. Uh, these pranks during sex, like things like dinner <laughs> with your family, you're just trying to do normal shit. I just picture that Macaulay during Culkin. sex. <laughs> yeah, you real, like, real bad. You try to gamble with like a like a midday sex before you've gotten hurt, and then just a fucking paint can to the head, <laughs> like like you are. <laughs> You're behind your wife, like, doggy style. Uh-huh. You're like, oh, all right, just about to finish. And then fucking paint can to the head just, like, knocks you off of her, off the back. And she's, at this point, used to it. She's like, god damn it. <laughs> I was so close. She finishes herself while you just, like, get some ice. <laughs> and then just, like, wait for the pain to, to die down. She's, she just looks at you and just, like, masturbates to your whole face covered in paint. <laughs> you, or, or, you, or you're uh, about to have sex and yeah. you're going, like, the bathroom to get cleaned up. And they have, like, <laughs> he always, like, makes the... um. The faucet electrocute you? Oh, yeah. That'd be the worst. Or the door handle. Door when you handle. grab it, you go in, it burns Baby, your hand. Baby, I'm home! Whoa! <laughs> just like burns your hand. <laughs> <laughs> okay, grass it is for me. I think grass it is for me, too. It's going to be okay. terrible, but I think I can make it fun. Yeah. I'm going to go uh, bring some music out there. I'll have a boombox. Yeah, box. there you go. Have some beers. <laughs> Daddy <laughs> just gets so fucked <laughs> all day. You have like 60 <laughs> beers by the time you're done mowing your grass with scissors. Just the I'm drunkest just so guy fucked up snailing it. across his grass. <laughs> chomp, chomp. You just fall asleep at different points, just wake <laughs> up and start scissoring again. Your whole stomach's covered in grass stains. Like your whole body is just, you just drag yourself along the whole That's way. That's how you become an alcoholic, <laughs> is from having to scissor your grass. You have to go to rehab every fall. Get your shit together. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, thanks, Bob. Yeah, that was good fun. job, Bob. Uh, let's talk about how much your mom sucks. Oh, boy. All right. Zach. <laughs> Dumb in the wild. Have a look at this little beauty. I'm just having a hard time getting a picture of a, of a vagina hmm? or a vulva. Vulva? Come on. Yeah. Uh, it has a little blade of grass between it. <laughs> and then it just goes, <laughs> like it queefs and just goes, <laughs> like it makes like that noise. And I and that's fun to me. That's a cool party trick. It, it'll be a little wet, like it'll be a perfect. It'd be have some snap on it. If, if my dick could whistle, <laughs> I'd be doing that all the time. Did you hear that? No. <laughs> it's like a little whistle. <laughs> oh my god! If your if your dick could do a cat call. <laughs> Excuse me. Who's doing that? I don't know. <laughs> 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 first time your hands above you your just, head you just risk not having sex like first time on a one night stand you just take <laughs> out your underwear it's like go time and all of a sudden and you can kind of make it do a little dance too you just like move your hips around it's like bobbing around go <laughs> <laughs> just... <laughs> the little dick mouth is like actually like the little whistling it, now the dick Form mouth is, is smiling at me <laughs> it, it winked at me it did a it did a great version of, of like oh Susanna and winked at me Oh my god. She'll be coming around the mountain when she comes. If my dick could whistle like that, then I would put a little mustache above <laughs> above the pee hole and I'd put two little googly eyes. <laughs> I would do a little dance with his googly eyes, a little mustache. <laughs> <laughs> Hello my honey. Hello my darling. <laughs> Hello my bad my rat time guy. <laughs> uh, okay. okay, so your mom's stupid. <laughs> so I, I'll set this up. I love my mom. Oh, yeah, she's, me too. Su- she's a sweet lady. But I, I joke, but I don't want to throw any, anybody else. There's other family members I joke with. I don't want to throw them under the bus and call them <laughs> out by name because they may not want to be called out for this. Fair. But we will joke about like, how did we survive our childhoods? Mm. 
because, and I will say this uh, also about my dad. My dad wasn't up this past week, and my mom and my stepdad came up with my grandma, and it was great to see him. But but Lindsay and I talk about this. Like when Lindsay's mom comes to town, she helps. She's like, hey, can I can I do anything? She knows we're super busy. The kids have busy lives. Can I help? Uh, can I take the kids to practice? Can I do like anything at all to help? And we're like, oh yeah, that'd be oh my god, that'd be awesome. And she'll like you know take you know Kyler into this piano lesson, uh, while then Lindsay takes Monroe into some softball or mm-hmm. whatever, and I'm able to work. You know something, something helpful. Uh, my family when they come, they just come and it's like entertain me. <laughs> And it's dance! Like, <laughs> dance for me. But they just come and they just like, they don't self entertain and they just have to be walked through everything. And especially my mom. It's unbelievable. I know. I think we talked a little bit oh when like, you had to like take her to bowling league. Yep. It's like, Denny, tell him a joke. And you're like, how about go fuck yourself? Oh my God. Oh, <laughs> it's yeah. the last time we talked about your mom. Oh my God. <laughs> I have something to add to that. Did it happen again? No, but no. It's something equally weird in the stand up comedy space. Oh boy. Okay. <laughs> so, yes, uh, for those of you who haven't heard that episode, it's been a little while. My mom, like, put me on the spot, which is such a weird thing to do to a comic, brought her into her bowling buddies and just asked me to, like, do stand-up for them. Right. In, I mean, in the kitchen of this Airbnb. Like, stand-up super like, awkward. What? But it happens with music, too. Like, plays a song. It's like, yeah. how about no? No. What are you doing? I'm not here. I'm hanging out. I'm not right. performing. Right. Hey, juggle for us. Yeah, right. What? <laughs> just a, it's a weird thing to do <laughs> if you don't know. Yeah, just don't do it. Yeah, the comics talk about it all the time privately. Like, why? Why mm-hmm. Why are you wanting me to, like, uh, yeah, exactly. Like, dance, monkey, dance. <laughs> but it's just weird after having done it for 20 years for my mom not to know that. But for me, it makes sense because she does not pay attention to my career. She doesn't. She just doesn't pay attention to what what her kids are actually doing. She thinks it's going like okay. Yeah, it's going fine. Okay, <laughs> are you paying your bills? Okay, then you're doing good. Well, look at you. But you're not like watching anything. She's not like involved <laughs> that way. And then, <laughs> just to also show how out of touch my family is with what I actually do. They brought me, they live in Riggins, Idaho. I've talked about it many times, little couple hundred person town, and it makes sense to the story. They brought a DVD. And a, a, a few visits before, for a few visits now, my grandma's told me about some guy who lives in Riggins once did stand up to some degree <laughs> and wants to be put in touch with me. Oh, that's the worst. Yep. Like, that is terrible. And so, like, somehow my grandma's talking to him, <laughs> and then he's like, they oh. They made it like bingo. Right. <laughs> you, should give, you should give your grandson my DVD. And so I've tried to avoid it. Well, now they came up. They brought the DVD. Mm, boy, I swear to God, this DVD. It says it's uh, this generic DVD. It's on sticker on the DVD, and it says Mister Stand Up, and on the bottom, a star is born. I shit you not. <laughs> so it's fantastic. Is oh, what you're saying. Oh boy. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Can they I borrow ha- it? Yeah, you you can. Okay, good. They hand me a DVD that says Mister Stand Up, a star is born. <laughs> And this is just some fucking guy that moved to town. I don't know this guy. <laughs> and I'm not a fucking agent. I don't, like, there's... I, I it's good. It's, like, what do you what, what what do they want from me? To do? <laughs> let me call it the president of showbiz. Mwah! <laughs> let me get Hollywood on the phone. <laughs> right, let me get Hollywood. And especially, like, I work outside of Hollywood so much where it's like, that's why we have this. <laughs> like, that's how little they understand what, like, my stand-up career is like, we have this little podcast network of ours partially because <laughs> I'm not one of the inside people. Yeah. Instead of, it's like, we're not doing TV shows, we're not doing anything mm. about, I'm not doing late night, I'm not doing any of that stuff anymore. Just, like, right. focusing on our own stuff. But they don't get that. Maybe they think I could, like, bring him on tour, which is also so weird. Like, I don't know so many good comics who work already. <laughs> like, they just, they have no, it would be like, the equivalent of, if this is um, doesn't make sense, if it's too inside, it'd be like, let's say your uh, your grandma and your mom know that you're a contractor. And all of a sudden, they meet some guy who once kind of put together a birdhouse. <laughs> right. and, and they know that you're looking for a new contract. Like, you're doing really well, and you need somebody to help, like, run, run construction sites, run the job. Mm-hmm. And it's like, well, Ted... Kind of put together a birdhouse two weeks ago. He'd like a job. You should see it. You should see his birdhouse. You should see his chainsaw bears. <laughs> right. <laughs> you do commercial construction. You fucking build sky risers. He made a chainsaw bear. <laughs> you're like, well, good for him. <laughs> What's the difference? <laughs> it's the same, right? Build. Both people build. <laughs> and it's like, they don't. so they gave me this DVD, insist that I watch it, and I don't even know what the fuck I'm supposed to report back Dude, to them. You got to bring this DVD in. I please. will bring it. I didn't want to put it on the show because I don't want to shame him publicly. That's true. We'll blow out his face. Okay. But <laughs> I, face. I did watch it with Lindsay and Monroe, and it's exactly what I thought it was going to be. It's an open mic where anybody can come. And best part, this was filmed at least 25 years ago. <laughs> The dude could be dead. He no, he's in. He's that's the other thing. It's so sad. Oh, now no. he's no, he's not dead. Oh, because he gave this. But he's like, he's not. He's disabled now. He's oh. like in his. But I don't like. What do you want me to do? It's like you. Right. You live. You're disabled. You live four hours from an airport. You did an open mic twenty five fucking years ago, <laughs> where you told pretty bad jokes. 
And now what the fuck am I supposed to do with all that? Mr. Stand Up? <laughs> I will open for you. Oh my god. <laughs> if he it's if I brought him and he was still doing that kind of act on the road, people in the audience would think he was doing a caricature of a bad stand-up comic, like a sketch, like he was a sketch actor doing an impersonation of an out-of-touch comic. Give it up for Mr. Comedy! For Mr. 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 Give stand-up! Give it up for Mr. Stand-up! <laughs> and then once they realized this was his real thing, it would be so sad and awkward that it would just be beyond uncomfortable <laughs> in the show. Uh, oh, so that's that. I so, love the idea of putting Mr. just in front of something oh you want God. to do. Like, here comes Mr. Music! <laughs> <laughs> of the generic... <laughs> <laughs> What's your band's name? Mr. Music. A star is born. <laughs> a star is born. Oh my fucking god. So <laughs> Mr. <this> Lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Doctor. Oh, that'd be, the, that'd be the best. Come on down and see me. I, I'm can, I'll, I cure all cancer patients. I'm Mr. Doctor. In the in the in the lawyer kind of analogy, <laughs> this would be like okay, if you're a lawyer <laughs> and your grandma knows you're a lawyer. Your mom's your lawyer, and they give you a DVD of someone who calls himself Mr. Lawyer, <laughs> and they haven't gone to law school, but they've watched quite a few legal shows. Right. <laughs> like, is this person a lawyer? No, he watches a lot of Perry Mason. <laughs> Can you help him? No, he's crazy. He's crazy. Get me? I can't help him. You uh, can't handle the truth. <laughs> that's all that's on the DVD. He <laughs> just like goes back. And it's not even Jack Nicholson right. from A Few Good Men. It's just him saying that. Yeah, exactly. Impersonating Jack Nicholson. Oh my God. <laughs> So, so they come up, <laughs> it's just, just this dumb with the wild, like, we're like, how do you not understand how life works? Mm -hmm. um, my mom did the craziest thing to me. We got, <laughs> we, we had an Airbnb, long story, but Lindsay's dad is fine now, but Lindsay's dad was supposed to come out when my mom and my stepdad and my grandma, who would have all this family out to kind of visit for the weekend. He's supposed to golf with me too. So, so if you, could, golf with you. you could get back to him, let him know that he let me down <laughs> whenever he, you get a chance. He had a bad medical emergency. Right. And no uh, excuse. looked really bad for a second. Looked yep. very scary. He's fine now, but, um, but he's, you know, he, he needs to be by the doctor so he can't travel. So we have this Airbnb we can't get a refund for. There was too many people to stay at our house. So we're like, just please stay here. And, and like, whenever the, they come to our house, we have to kick out one of the kids so there's like, there's no reason to kick one of the kids out of their bedrooms when you can just stay right down the street at a nice house, bathroom on the same floor. So it's easy for everybody, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. I give them the Airbnb address. My mom has used GPS before, like on her phone. She has an iPhone. I know she knows how to use it. But with me, it's like, if it's out of her tiny comfort zone, if it, it, what's annoying is she'll see how busy we are, but just not fucking care. Mm -hmm. And just like, oh, you're fine. It's like this thing she just says, like, I could be... Ah, you're not crying. Mm -hmm, yeah, I could be, like, bleeding to death or, like, dragging myself. Ah, oh, Danny's fine. He's fine. Like, no matter what's going on... It's Danny, just, you awake? I'm awake, Mom. Ah, oh, he's fine. <laughs> your, your legs are yeah, gone? My legs are gone? Mm -hmm. I think it's just easy for her to say I'm fine, and then that's her, like, mental cue for herself. Like, I don't I don't want to do it. I don't want to help. <laughs> I don't want to do anything, so I just, I just won't, and I'll tell myself it's okay not to by saying it's fine. <laughs> and so... She just chooses whenever she's around. It's so fucking annoying. She just won't do anything helpful at all. And I'm, I send her this address. I'm like, just look, just, you know, go there while it's still light out. You guys can get in before you come. I have to work till six. Then you can come at the house. We'll hang out. It'll be fun. But just like, go ahead and check in while it's light out. Nope. Just doesn't do it. <laughs> Shows up at the house with the luggage. And so I'm like, great. At the end of the night, when I'm, you know, ready to go to bed, we've hung out. And now I know I'm going to have to fucking go to their Airbnb like their children and walk them through it. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what I did. It was the weirdest thing to <laughs> then take. And this is a small area. They had to make literally one turn. It was on 4th Street. <laughs> Dude, it's, yeah, it's, it's one turn. It's by Capone's. It's, it's, the, the, the trickiest part is... Where they've been. <laughs> right. The trickiest part is there's a one-way street. Right. Like, that's the hardest part about hardest getting part. there. Mm -hmm. and, but <laughs> you, it's one turn. The address, there. the address to get to this Airbnb from our house, not just... Joking. You take a right out of our driveway, <laughs> you go down, take a right on 4th, and it's on your left. <laughs> That's it. That's fucking... You, you type it into Google, yeah. like Google Maps, and it's like, oh, God, you come on. Get, you, you got it. You got this. <laughs> come on, get out of here. And not Don't only, waste that bandwidth. Get the fuck out of here. Not only is it on the left, <laughs> it shares a parking lot with the restaurant we took into last time when they were here, Capone's. Mm. Just go to that place. One turn. Capone's. Park there. Walk inside. <laughs> and, and it's like, it, it use the excess. Nope. Can you take us? Okay. So then I drive them to their Airbnb, and then they just, they stand in their, they're in their fucking car like they don't know how houses work. Like they've, lo like they've lost their legs again. Right! Uh, oh, what? It's Can so fucking weird. Danny, carry me. Right, right. Mom. I park, I'm like, okay, I park, I go, I open the door for them, mm. and I'm like, come on, you can come in, like, like, like their kids, I'm literally telling them, come on in, come on, you can Get come inside, here. it's getting dark. It's getting dark. I go in, I turn on all the lights, and they're just standing there like they're helpless, like they don't know what to do. 
I, I show them where they could. Grandma, you could stay here. Here's this bed. I'm like, this bed look good for you? Okay. And then I go into the other bed. I turn on all the lights. I'm like, and they're like, oh, what's going on in the cellar there? They're, I swear to God, there are like three <laughs> people in the kitchen. Was, okay. Is your monster down there, Is your monster down there? I fucking turn on that light. I go down, turn on all the lights in the fucking cellar. I come up and tell them what's down there. <laughs> then I lock the door to the cellar. My mom's like, oh, okay, good. <laughs> Not kidding. I'm like, how the fuck did you keep my sister and I alive? <laughs> and you don't know how anything works. <sighs> and then and then I left him there. So it gets back, back to you, mom. Uh, if you're mad, well, fucking guess what? We're annoyed too. We love we love you. We love you. <laughs> Absolutely. But let's maybe put a tiny bit more effort into figuring out how just fucking anything at all works. Open the door. Go in your room. Why? Why? <laughs> what a weird experience for me at 44 years old to take my grandma and my mom and my stepdad and basically put them to bed <laughs> in an Airbnb and then come back and put my own kids to bed. I love the, the and you gave all of them a kiss on the forehead. Oh my God. You walked in. The, <laughs> you're, you're, you scared? You okay? You want me to leave the night light on? You could. You, you good now? Maybe. Are you okay? okay? <laughs> it's going to be okay, right? Okay, baby stepdad. Go to sleep. Go to sleep, baby mommy. Go to sleep, baby stepdad. <laughs> <laughs> Daddy, bring me water! <laughs> God damn it, Grandma! And if you're like, how could these, if you don't understand this at all, part of it is my family lives in this tiny, I just, I've said about it, talked about it so much, but it is so weird. It's so tiny and isolated. They're in this tiny little, where they haven't had to learn how the outside world works. Mm. And they've just like, they've all, they've all just lived in the, along this little canyon. And that, so they can like, they, they can do their job. They can go to eight places along this area. And that's all they've done for so many years that if you take them outside of that comfort zone, it's the weirdest thing. It's like um, there should be like almost a fucking nature show about it. <laughs> it kind of gets shut down. Yeah. You, you take this animal out of its li very limited ecosystem and it just like – like I picture like Penny, our dog, when you put like a costume on her. Huh. She hates it and she just hunkers down. She doesn't know what else to do. That's p most of my family. You take them out of this tiny ecosystem and they just like – they just sit wherever they are. And like I don't, don't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> is this the same kind of door? Am I in the same world? As <laughs> I've been to stores, but not this one. This one's big. God, please. Please, people, keep learning. Keep don't learning. be burdened on your family. We tell the kids now, we're like, don't let, we, we seriously just talk to them all the time. Please don't let us become that. Mm -hmm. Just don't invite us over. If we don't, if, if I fucking act, if I'm that much of a burden, just stop inviting me over <laughs> until I learn my lesson. <laughs> Put me in the corner. Put me in timeout. Put me in the corner and say, fucking sit in the corner until you decide to figure out how anything works again. <laughs> okay. And I again, I do, I fuck, I love them, but Jesus Christ. <laughs> it's a lot. It's a lot. <laughs> it is a lot. <laughs> uh, well, thanks, Dan's mom. <laughs> thanks, for, <laughs> thanks for providing fodder. Yeah, thanks, thanks, for, thanks for being uh, uh, mm -hmm. dumb in the wild this week. Oh, boy. <laughs> All right, you want to move on to who the what fuck? I do. All right, Zach. <laughs> Uh, who the what fuck? And I already yes. fucked it up. So dumb in the wild. And by the way, before we move on to this, <laughs> I do just want to say, I didn't exaggerate any of those details. I did. I believe you 100%. That's what's so crazy. I see it. Like the, <laughs> if you're like, no, you didn't have to like walk them in and like turn the lights. No, I really did. <laughs> I just picture like they're in the lawn with their, mm -hmm. their hands are clasped they're together. Like, is it, is it okay, Danny? Danny, can we come in now? <laughs> like barely lit by the right. front entry porch light. Because come on, is it okay? Is it safe for the monsters away? Mm -hmm. Have you have you banished the witches? <laughs> <laughs> yes, 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 mom, get in here. Yes, there's no goblins in the basement. I checked. <laughs> now go and to bed. If there was, I locked it. I locked it. <laughs> I locked the goblins in the basement. <laughs> 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 so just don't go down there. You're going to be safe, Mom. Oh, boy. Uh, okay, so Dumb in the Wild is... I'm just going to explain it real yeah. quick because I fucked it up. Dumb in the Wild is something dumb that has happened that's not just us personally doing something yes, stupid. Yes, yes. You've seen it out uh, in the world, and that's what Dumb in the Wild is all about. Yes. And now we're moving on to Who the What Fuck. Okay. Which does not fit into Dumb Dumb Idiots. It doesn't fit into Dumb Dumb Idiots Listener Edition by any means. Yeah. It's just... What the fuck is this? And a okay. lot of times you just read it. It's not necessarily like, this is like, somebody did something really stupid. Yeah. It's just fucking stupid. Okay. So that's how we're setting up uh, Who the What Fuck this week. And this was sent in by Dummy Maggie. Um, <laughs> it's just a representation of um, a very annoying thing. Okay. That is also extremely gross. So we call her the pooper. We have lots of names for her. Said Angie Kylie in Fisher's Wa or Windermere neighborhood. And Kylie's talking about the woman recently caught on someone's doorbell camera mm -hmm. going, uh, you know, to the bathroom in their yard. Oh, my Residents God. Residents say it happened last summer and it's happening again. It's uh, back! It's back. Honey! Hun she's shitting in our grass again! 
I got to ask that my buddy Scott Long is a comic I've known longer than any other comic, and mm-hmm. he lives he lives in Fishers, Indiana. Oh, I've been to Fishers, Indiana, a little suburb of yeah, Indy. Did you see this uh, celebrity there? By chance, you seen any any I, human shitting? I, I didn't. It's, it's been hmm. a while. I don't, maybe they weren't shitting yet. <laughs> Man, just just somebody shitting in random. Yeah, it says. Uh, yeah, we have found her droppings in our yard. She carries what? her own toilet paper, and she just leaves the toilet paper behind with her droppings. Oh my Monique God. Miller explained last week or the week before. She did it in three and four different yards down the street. Every other yard. <laughs> Kylie added, "What? How much? How she's I'm pooping not, so much? I've not personally witnessed the pooper," said Garrett Cup. Uh, no one has to. Neighbors know the signs even beyond the obvious one or two. The toilet paper is a calling card. So we know when we see that, that she's been around, oh Kylie God. said. Uh, so Thursday, Fisher police said they had identified the woman responsible. Police did not reveal her identity, uh, <laughs> but did say they encouraged her to seek professional assistance. <laughs> yeah. Because they can't do anything. Right. So they're thinking that she's a runner. Because I guess if you run long distances, your stomach gets all jostled up and they you have to shit in the woods. They think she's a runner? Woods. Yes. And I guess it's a nor- runner's belly. I'm like, I'm, I'm a doctor, and it's runner's belly. So they don't think she's like a, a homeless woman. <clears throat> she's like a like someone just from the area who's just like, I'm going to go on a long run, mm-hmm. and if I have to go, I'm just going to go ahead and shit on some neighbor's yard. Shit in the yard. Uh, and it says right here, uh, anyway, let's just read the end of this yeah, article. Yeah. It says, neighbors believe that she's a jogger. She can't. Uh, they can't really do anything until they catch her, you know, but it's gross, said Erica Haynes. It does happen. I've been a runner my whole life, and it does happen, what? but you just have to plan for it. Police say criminal charges could still be filed in the future, but then yeah, it just goes on to say yeah. that they've um, they've done this, not happy about it, having to go clean it up. Uh, but what a weird thing! What a weird thing! If you're not severely mentally ill and you're like living on the street, like if you're somebody who like you leave your house, uh, you got all your expensive fucking uh, what is it, Fleet Feet runners <laughs> gear on, and you're heading down there, and you're like you know like you're serious about it, like you can really run long distances, and you're like planning on your times and phone, everything, and phone on the armband, mm-hmm. you get phone on your armband, listen to a podcast, listen to music, whatever, you're tracking your speed, and then every once in a while you just fucking shit in a neighbor's yard and keep on running, <laughs> then you're shit, right? You're a piece. Shit. They should, uh, as a punishment, they should make her start shitting in grocery bags and tie it to herself. As a punishment, and run around with it. Like some people used to do with their dogs. This is not a nice thing to do. They should rub her face in her shit. Oh. If they catch her, they should make her. They should no. Let's take it further. Oh boy. She has to eat her own shit. Eat the shit. Eat the shit. No, no fine, nothing. But you know what? You just have to eat. You fucking have to eat that shit. Listen, you're going to prison. You can go to prison for 15 years, or or you can eat your own shit. <laughs> <laughs> what a what a. Uh, predicament. What would you be in? What would you do? That's oh man. I do my own shit. <laughs> <laughs> it was fifteen years. That's a long time. If it was a day, I'm like, I'll go to jail for a day. A, day. a week. I don't know months, what the magic number is. A like, month. A week. I might go for a week. But if they're like, mm, if they're like somewhere between three weeks and a month, I think I'll just eat my own shit. Mm-hmm. Oh. <laughs> ah, it'd be so terrible. It'd be the worst. But at well, least you're free. All the consistencies of, of poop. <laughs> Don't really know which one you're going to be dealing with. Right. Ugh. Uh, no, thank you. But that at least is, that leaves you. Like, you can just get that taste out eventually, but uh, go to prison. Uh, so why, so why like can't shit you bring, in your mouth in prison. That's the worst case scenario. Right? <laughs> you're like, I'm not eating my own shit. And then you can get there and someone oh, shits someone in your mouth. You. Oh, my God. <laughs> someone heard about the situation you were given. And they're like, oh, you thought you were going to fucking sneak out of that? <laughs> eat your own shit. <laughs> <laughs> and they, they just make you eat their shit. <laughs> they shit in your mouth every day you're in prison. Well, you're like, ah. Then you know better next time. You will take the plea <laughs> deal the next time you're out running around. Why can't you bring, why can't this runner, if she is a runner, just bring a doggy poop bag <laughs> on your run? Yeah. And then you shit. Okay, you got to shit. So you shit in somebody's yard. That's still fucking weird and gross. Mm-hmm. But then if you pick up your own shit and then you just carry it in your little baggie until you make it to a garbage can, then at least you're a decent person on some level. I don't know. Have it's you so ever, weird, but. It's so weird. Have you ever um, been around someone who owns like a Great Dane? Yeah, those huge dogs. Yeah. <laughs> that is legit like picking up human shit. Yeah, it's just such big turds. It's like, it's like five pound doggy bag. Big old warm turd. It's the worst, dude. But I will say if somebody was shitting, if a runner, if a local runner was shitting in my yard, mm. but they would then use a doggy bag to pick up their shit, I think it was kind of funny. <laughs> I wouldn't even pre- I wouldn't press charges. I wouldn't call the police. I'd film them. I would think it was funny. I'd have a viral video. Yep. I'd, 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 get, I'd put it on the gram. <laughs> um, get flagged. But oh, yeah. Somewhere flagged. will accept it. If you blurt it, it, they still get flagged for, <laughs> for no, shit. No, you'll be okay. Might have to blurt a little bit. 
What's yeah. the point? Of, what's the point of posting if you have, can't even see the poop coming out? Can't see the poop coming out. All right. That's, that's what I always say. I start a Pornhub account. There we go. Just like poop, now we're poop, doing poop it. Poop runner. <laughs> poop runner. And you can just jerk off. Joggy McPoop pants. Pictures of my neighbor lady shitting in my yard and cleaning up a poop. <laughs> 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 uh, so not necessarily dumb, but just don't go around and, and shit in yards. <sighs> don't shit! In, don't shit in yards. That's I mean that's the number one lesson if here. You take away one thing from any of the episodes we've done so far. Just don't shit in people's yards, please. Come on, come yeah, on. Shit, think- shit in your own yard. Just shit in your pants. You weirdo. Just shit in your pants. Wear like a, a diaper. Decent person. Big baby. Yeah. <laughs> just shit yourself, you baby. <laughs> All right. So moving on to our next story for who the what fuck. This was sent in by dummy Jeremy. Uh, and I get what they're trying to do with this, but it's just so goddamn goofy to me. So shark advocates calling for rebranding violent attacks as interactions. Oh my God. <laughs> this is, this is why some people, this, this feels okay. <laughs> sometimes I get accused of picking on like the far right. It's cause I have, sure. but I picked on the far left and sometimes it's, uh, maybe I haven't, I don't know if there's a number it's happened as often. This is the shit that fucking kills me <laughs> about like the far left. Is, well, you're, is, well, what, if the, what if they're far right? There's no fucking way. This is the left. <laughs> this is this is liberalism out of control. Where it's like, no, yeah. it's, it's bad for the shark population to have the tax label as attacks. We gotta call them interactions. <laughs> Fuck you. It gets better. It's a shark attack. <laughs> it fucking attack. It's not an interaction if it bites somebody's fucking arm off. <laughs> All this right. is fucking idiotic. <laughs> Who's attacking whom here? Marine experts and advocates in Australia are urging the public to refrain from using the word attack in reference to sharks. Fucking get out of here. Declaring that the majestic uh, predatory fish has been majestic. unfairly <laughs> stigmatized as a deliberate killer. It is a killer! That's Inst- what it does to stay alive! Instead, officials have suggested that violent run-ins with sharks can be dubbed uh, with more neutral words such as interactions. They Hold can on. fuck off. Others have suggested swapping the word with terms like negative encounter. <laughs> negative encounter? Incident and simply bites. Those marine <laughs> biologists can suck all the dicks. <laughs> Go suck all the shark dicks. <laughs> like, what are you doing? Uh, shark attack a negative is a encounter. Mm-hmm. No, people can just like understand. That's fucking they, ridiculous. Like, it, goes it is a killer. They, they argue that the majority of people that call attacks, they're just merely getting like little nips or minor it's injuries. It's still an attack. <laughs> it's still an attack. And it's like, 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 like there's fucking pandemonium breaking out every time a shark attack. Uh, I don't remember seeing the protest when we were like, kill all the sharks, kill all the sharks, round them up and kill them all. That's never fucking happened. <laughs> And it's like, like, what are they? F- I don't understand what the goal is here. Like, <laughs> is more money going to be donated to people? Like, there's going to be a population of people who have a bunch of money they want to donate, but are also so fucking stupid they wouldn't donate that money if a, a tax were labeled as a tax, <laughs> but they will donate that money if a tax were labeled as negative encounters. <laughs> like, what a fucking colossal waste of time. To just push for this on any level. What a like, weird little ivory tower you live in, like, in your <laughs> academia. Best case scenario is you make everybody less afraid of sharks, right. and then more people get attacked by sharks. Because they go out <laughs> in the water, and they're like, like dude, they're just negative encounters. Not How bad can they be? <laughs> right. <laughs> it's just, they get, they're going to get so many more legs, those oh sharks. This is it's all good news for the sharks. Do you want to go swimming today, Timmy? No, I'm a little bit worried about attacks. Oh, they don't do that anymore. <laughs> I mean, there's a small chance of a negative encounter. <laughs> But there's zero chance of an attack. Well, then I guess I'll go. Let's go. Let's go. How far out can I go? As hey, far as you want. As far as you want. Hey, my leg's <laughs> bleeding. Is that bad to be bleeding in the water? It's just a little bite. Ah, you might get a negative encounter. <laughs> right, just a little nips. <laughs> you might, a, little, a little nippy. That's all. That's you, might have a, you might have an interaction. <laughs> but you're not going to get attacked. I got attacked by a fucking mountain lion. Hold on. You mean a mountain lion aggressively greeted you? Oh, my God. All like, f- <laughs> like how, do you, how do you spin that? There's so many other ways. It'd be so funny. You'd be like, oh, my God, a cougar attack. He was just saying hi. All the fucking semantics things drive me fucking crazy right now. Mm-hmm. Like, 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 there's a certain person. It's like if you if, if you don't use and listen, I understand like the pronouns and all that. Like, I understand where it comes from. It comes from a good place. And but but there's like a certain kind of person. If you happen to get it wrong on this person, like you don't even know them, then they get like mad at you. And it's like, what are you doing? Mm-hmm. What are you doing? It's like I'm ha- I'm happy if I can just remember someone's first name. But then, like, but then I gotta remember this extra language. Like, now if I'm talking to this marine biologist person, if I say attack instead of an <gasps> in- encounter, like they're triggered, go fuck yourself. <laughs> like, you soft, go fucking, you go fucking swim. Do right. nothing but swim with, I wish I could fucking give you so many little nicks <laughs> and just make you swim out in fucking shark infested waters. Right. And, then, and then when you have an interaction or a negative encounter or an attack, <laughs> 
then we can talk about like so do you feel like those are positive like would would you describe that like it just ate your fucking legs <laughs> would you now describe it as an attack i'm feeling very negative about this <laughs> I feel like quite negative about my encounter. <laughs> would you say negative enough to call it an attack? No. <laughs> no. I wouldn't dare. I mean, it was not my favorite it's interaction. I got it hard enough. That's why I just fucking throw them back <laughs> on the water. <laughs> These sharks have had it hard enough. <laughs> These sharks. <laughs> These sharks have a hard enough time. Uh, fun ah! fact. Uh, you want to hear a fun fact that I know? Some people are still annoying. Yes, that too. Uh, uh, sure. Sh- sharks have been around longer than trees. They have? <laughs> yeah. Longer than trees? <laughs> yeah. What? Yeah, it's a real thing. There were sharks on Earth before there was even any trees. <laughs> right. That's fucking crazy. It's insane. I mean, come on. God. I, I, no think, I, I, wish, I, wish, I wish sharks could like pass knowledge down from like one generation to the next. <laughs> and then there's like like the shark lore. It's like, man, I remember my grandpa talking about like, you know, I guess like our my great, 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 like million times great was like, oh, I just remember when there was no trees. <laughs> great, 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 great white shark. <laughs> <laughs> That's where it came from. That's how they named it. How fucking long ago is that? I don't even That's know. So I, don't, long ago. I guess it's a, I don't know why I know that fact, but I do. Mm. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, if you just, if you're feeling because I did lean a little bit as I read it and started thinking about it a little bit, I was like, I get what they're trying to do. I, but I, I, I get take it, but that. I, I do get it, but I hate it. And then it. apply it to any other animal that's not a shark. Mm-hmm. Then you're gonna say you got attacked by it. You got attacked, <laughs> right? Because well, and why not just do that to everything or like, even a person? Oh, you attacked me! Oh. No, you did a negative Officer encounter. I had a negative encounter <laughs> with this individual. <laughs> what do you mean? We just feel like we feel like serial rapists are just getting like a lot of bad press. Mm. So we're like, what if we took out the word rape and just like called it like a bad date? <laughs> right. We just uh, aggressively fond a, a bad dater, aggressive <sighs> aggressive dater. Mm-hmm. Like it's just it's just fucking it's it's, it's stupid. Absolutely it's like, absurd. It's like, I just think like why can't we just be okay with understanding that like yes some an- like those animals they're apex predators or they're predators on some level Mm -hmm. and they do attack sometimes and that's just okay that's one of the things they do like they're not attacking all the time Mm. but they do attack this it's just a on just a gut level i have such a like (laughs) just reaction to people wanting to make those semantic changes Mm. it's it's that whole like softening of the world like when you don't want like anything to read across like too negative and it's like there are plenty of negative things in the world and it's okay it's okay for there to be. It's like yin and yang. <laughs> there's fucking positivity and light, and there's death and darkness, and and places can exist in both spaces or people and whatever things. And you know who's the the biggest beneficiary of of sharks like being or people being scared of sharks? What sharks? <laughs> like, right, because then they stay out of their great. water <laughs> right. and leave them alone. <laughs> right. So if cool. anything, we should be make it a more aggressive name uh, right. instead of just a, uh, instead of just attacks. Go one step further, whatever that is, because they're loving it. Yeah, I just they don't, don't want you in their shit. They're fine. Leave them alone. I just don't understand the reasoning. Like, like the sharks have feelings, and you're like you're right. projecting your feelings out. Look, they don't <gasps> give a fuck what we call them. No one likes them. It's got to hurt their feelings, <laughs> right? <laughs> Little fins. And I think about that with like wolves and stuff. I know there's a lot of like um, you know, like uh, I mean, I like wolves. I mean, I have a fucking tattoo of, of, a, of a wolf. Yeah, uh, it's a very controversial animal in Idaho, and people like you know don't want them labeled too negatively because then people want like poach them or like get rid of them. But but yeah, but. They are being viewed negatively because they do attack ranchers' livestock and they do fuck up their herds. It's like, yeah, but <laughs> like that is what they do, <laughs> and it's like it's a fair label to say that they're like a, a nuisance, or whatever. Like, and yes, you, they can be a nuisance and also be a species worthy of worthy of protection. <laughs> it, it just frustrates me where it's like it, it just feels like um, it reminds me of like a laugh track in a sitcom where it's like we're just gonna assume that you're so fucking stupid you don't know when to laugh. So we'll provide the laugh cue for you. We're gonna, we're gonna, uh, you know, just um, assume that you're so fucking stupid you can't think in any kind of nuance and understand an animal can be violent and also not violent. And so if we say it's attacks, you're so stupid you're just gonna think they attack all the time and want to get rid of them apparently. So we'll call it negative encounter. Mm-hmm. It's just like this kind of like um, patronizing or mm-hmm. something. I yeah. don't know. Maybe I I'm, maybe I'm reading too much into it, but it, it, it clearly it angers me. <laughs> clearly it does. <laughs> Uh, that's that's why it was, that's why it's here. Okay, that's why it's in the show. That's <laughs> one of my fa- my more, one of my hobbies, is making you a little bit mad. <laughs> All uh, right, well, should we take a look at one star heroes? Oh boy, speaking of speaking of anger, <laughs> Zach, let's get real riled up. I get no respect in real life. Always am upset, so I let them know I hate them on the internet. Yeah. Okay, Hi. so we've talked about. This lady before and her taco stand. Yes, but we've she hasn't been the star of One Star Heroes yet. No, we we have talked about just going down there mm-hmm. and the interactions we've had with her. But yeah. yep, there's a there's a little taco shack not far from the studio. Tacos Reneso in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, and 
I think like anybody listening, if you've listened to more than a few episodes, you know that in general, I am a champion of taking it easy on small businesses and trying to be understanding and having patience. <laughs> and that it's hard, especially in the customer service, you know, area of like, you know, and especially lately with COVID and labor shortage and everything, like, you know, give them the benefit of the doubt. Right. All that being said, this is the worst business owner I've ever had multiple and or, or, or employee I've ever had multiple encounters with. Right. This lady who is, every time I've been to Tacos Renato, so it's always the same lady. <laughs> and she has never been anything but just short, rude, and frankly, just mean with me. Oh, absolutely. Like she, there is, I have never met, there's not, there's not, no one else runs it. It's hers. Yeah. Like sometimes I've there's seen guy somebody there, I guess, sometimes. that pops in there, but he's never selling me stuff. He's just yeah. kind of there. Right. I don't know what he, what he does and why he's there, but. Yeah, her car, she's always there. And it's a weird place. It's, it's, it's next to a gas station. It's, it's, it's like a little stand instead of a truck, you right. know, uh, you know, specifically or technically. It's not, you couldn't move this thing. I guess you did pull it as a, on a trailer maybe. But anyway, it's always in the same spot. And she has, she, she barely cracks her window. We've joked about that before, like mm -hmm. to give, to, to talk to you. But she just, she makes so little effort to take your order. Um, it'd be so easy just to, I, I can't imagine, or I wonder how many people just leave after standing outside her little thing for a while because she doesn't come, she doesn't greet you. Mm -hmm. You have to like go up to the window, hello, excuse me? And then she begrudgingly shows up to take your order in my experience. Mm -hmm. And these reviews reflect that. She has, okay, on Yelp, 30 reviews, three out of five. And I'm amazed that it's three out of five. <laughs> The five stars I found were ones based on the quality of the food. It is good food. So great tacos. It's good tacos. Probably best street tacos, I think, in Coeur d'Alene. Best street tacos. I, I would agree. Best street tacos in Coeur d'Alene, mm -hmm. given to you by fucking monster from hell. <laughs> right. So, he, and here, here's the reviews. <laughs> One star, Lisa H. from Pasadena. So these are these are not exaggerations. A lot of times I think like, oh my God, they're exaggerating. No. <laughs> okay. If I could give zero stars, I would. We were the first people in line. Open sign was lit up and we waited a couple minutes at the window. Yeah, no one helps them. Mm -hmm. Knocked politely at the window and then called, thinking that maybe they just weren't open. Mm -hmm. Go to my car and wait until they appear to be open. A man pulls up, walks to the window, and the lady opens the window and he orders. I walk back up to the window and she says, what do you want? <laughs> I tell her I was waiting and didn't know they were open. And she says, I was busy. She says, you can't park there, which is in the parking lot. I know exactly what she's talking about. Uh -huh. I'm like, what? I tell her I'd like a breakfast burrito. She says, what kind of meat? I tell her bacon and she says, no, the menu's over there. <laughs> I couldn't believe what a complete rude bee she was. Bitch. She is a bitch. Uh, I will never go there again, and I warn anyone not to because, like almost everyone else in these reviews, she is one of the rudest people I have ever run into in Idaho. <laughs> she is the rudest person I've ever run into in, all, in, in Coeur d'Alene. Okay. Consistently. Maybe there's been one-offs, but as yeah. far as someone I've seen multiple times, and I'm like, because at first I'm like, oh, maybe she's having a bad day. Oh, maybe she's sad. Maybe something happened. Bad week. Bad month. Bad week. And I've probably been there over, the, and then I took a break, and I'm like, fuck this place. And then eventually there's not that many taco places around here. I'm like, okay, it's, it's so close. I'll go back every single time. I'm like, I leave thinking I fucking hate her so much. <laughs> every single time. It's probably it's why I like it so much though. It's because she hates you so much. <laughs> <laughs> Joni K, the next one, one star. Stopped in for breakfast before heading to look out for skiing. I'm allergic to eggs, so requested a veggie burrito. No go. She said no. <laughs> so then I requested a breakfast burrito with no eggs, just potatoes and cheese. Still no go. <laughs> also a weird burrito request. Well, true. <laughs> and, <laughs> true. But I guess she's allergic. And really rude about it. And trust me, I would eat the damn eggs if I could, but no amount of Benadryl makes it even worth it. I asked if there was anything to eat with no eggs, like even a quesadilla. She said, no, you can't have anything. What the hell? <laughs> Such a bummer because I live down the street and my husband always stops in for food. He was so pissed off, he's never going back. Lame. I understand limiting the menu at certain times, but at least be nice and say sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Linda D, one star. The food is delicious, but the rude attendant makes it difficult to return. I stood outside trying to get someone to help me. But no one was there ordering. But the lady said, move the car. <laughs> she said she was very busy, was on the phone. I ordered the steak burrito. It is good, but the help needs a happy pill. <laughs> Agreed. Duh. She does need a happy pill. No, she doesn't. I love her. And it keeps going. <laughs> Carrie Ann C, one star. Was not very friendly and did not taste very Mexican. Won't be coming back. <laughs> Pretty nice for what you get. 
Uh, pretty pricey. And... Pretty pricey for what you get. Not nice. Pretty <laughs> right. pricey for what you get. Okay, so she didn't think it tastes authentic. Okay. Eddie R. This breaks my heart because their food is amazing. The customer service was horrible. They have fish tacos on their menu. When I ordered them, she stopped me and said, no. And they're not exaggerating because I've had this too. <laughs> no, she she yeah. doesn't communicate very well and she's been here a while. So she could learn enough English to at least not be such a piece of shit <laughs> when she talks to you. Because sure. when you order, you're like, eh, can I get... No. <laughs> it's a very abrupt no. <laughs> and then... <laughs> oh, all right. Yes. One minute. And then just like shut your fucking little window. Right. And you just wait until she's ready to give you her, her food. <laughs> uh, she stopped me and said no. Then she said if I want fish tacos, go to another Mexican restaurant. <laughs> well, we did just that. Never going back. Uh, it's like opting into an abusive relationship. Yeah, like you're crazy. Like, you know what? Where do you want to go for lunch? Let's go to an abusive relationship. Oh, right, right down the road for tacos? Yep. Like, it's exactly what it's like. Do you want to get yelled at today? Yeah. Let's go Last time I went down there, I just I did go down just for the joke. I'm like, I wonder if she'll yell at me again or just be a monster. <laughs> uh-huh. And then, yep, does not disappoint. <laughs> uh, Colin K, one star. I've had food here before, but won't be coming back. The level of rudeness exhibited by the owner knows no bounds. The food is fair for Mexican roach coach food. And I'm a big connoisseur of going to some of these places. All that said, the dark tint around the curious, the curio, I think supposed to be, where you can't see what's going on in any shape or form. I have no idea what level of cleanliness is. And what, what they're trying to describe is it is weird. She opens this dark little window, a tiny crack, and you just cannot see what's in there. It's it's so uncomfortable mm-hmm. talking to her because this weird little like, uh, what, what? What do you want? It's like you're doing a drug deal. It is. A little bit. It has like a drug deal vibe. It does. Like you're in an alley doing a drug deal, but you're just trying to order a fucking breakfast burrito. <laughs> and then she goes, uh... All that said, that yeah, the dark tint, no, it's, no idea what's going on there. Um, and then the fact I was just treated like trash when I tried to order something more often than I could bear. Will not be coming back. Do not recommend to anybody. Owner says to me, I have 10 burritos. No more orders. Go away. <laughs> just straight up says, go away. And there's numerous reviews where people complain that she literally just says to them, go away. I'm done today. During COVID-19, there's way too many good businesses with good business owners to support that are kind and looking out for the community. I won't support some place that doesn't have those values. Yeah, agreed. <laughs> Cynthia M., one star. Terrible argumentative attitude. Lady work in the booth, 3 p.m. Friday, 1-3-2020. We patiently waited when she opened the window to serve the guy before us. She tried to close the window and not talk to us. <laughs> yep. When she did, she was rude. We tried to order beef tortoise. It's right on the menu. And she says, I don't make beef tortoise. It's even a nice 48 degree day for January. She obviously is not a happy person. Go down to Zips. They have uh, down the street. They don't have tacos, but they are super nice. If you're okay. But if you're, (laughs) if your alternative, you're requesting Zips. Right. So, and you're saying that that's way better service. Which speaks to her. <laughs> it speaks about her Zips is Zips is fucking also terrible. <laughs> Shit. It's garbage. It's garbage. But, but if you're like, oh my God, I just wish I could get treated I, like I, I got treated at Zips. I've had good experiences at Zips. True. But a lot of times, it's you're really you're talking to like little tiny kids Trips is, that don't want to be there. Zips is like, um, oh, like Checkers or Rally or like I'm trying to think of like that um, burger chain in the Midwest where there's like the tiny little sponge burgers. Uh, White uh, Castle? Uh, White Castle. It's like that level of kind of food. Mm-hmm. You know, and it, yeah, not known for rolling out the red carpet, <laughs> right. but, and if you're, yeah, if you're, if your reference point is like, oh my God, it fucking zips, I treat me like a queen. <laughs> Five star. <laughs> Five star service at zips. Marissa M. One star. Horrible customer service. Avoid <laughs> this place. She literally told us she was too busy, even though no one else was there. Uh, yeah. She fucking, she's so angry. Patrick F. We've is, joked about this while being a cover up for some money laundering. Oh, right. It doesn't even make sense. <laughs> right. I've never seen someone hate their customers, just in general more. <laughs> Patrick F., the food is pretty good, but the lady is flat out mean. <laughs> zero, zero customer service skills. And then this one's funny. What's just her name? What's this her is name? a saga. I gotta go meet her. Yeah, no one says her name. This is How F., which is now three stars. This is from like 9-17-2020, updated review. Okay. Colin, you may not be able to order odd people, but great food and prices. I've learned to deal with them. <laughs> Calling and ordering by phone is best as you can really uh, as you can really see them to order in person. The man is friendlier than the lady. Great breakfast burritos and more. Okay, so th- this person is just giving up and like they're so fucking mean, but, but the burritos are okay. <laughs> we can order them online. Now look at this saga. Five thirty one, twenty twenty. So before the three stars, one star. First visit today for a breakfast burrito and I really liked it. Very fresh and hot. Place looks super clean inside and lady made me wait six feet back and was wearing a mask. I'm good with that. I read the other post about her unfriendly customer service. I can see that. But she's cautious. 
plays by her rules, so just go with it. It's like the soup Nazi from Seinfeld. <laughs> She's not conversational or friendly, but whatever. Great burrito with six dollars with bacon, or for six bucks with bacon. Better quality than other locals who charge from eight to fourteen bucks. All's open Sunday. Ba ba ba. Highly recommend supporting this place. Da da da. Update. <laughs> I retract what I said above. As this owner is a rude piece of work. I just came back and tried to order and called and she ignored me. I knocked on the glass and she acted like she wasn't there or wasn't open or was busy and didn't give a crap. She's completely rude, has no communication skills. Instead, I strongly suggest tacos, Los Pancos. I think they meant to say Panchos. Yeah. They spelled it wrong. On 4th and uh, I don't know what they're trying to spell there. Haiti? I don't think I that's think right. So. But across from Union. Yeah, there is a place right off the freeway uh, near uh, Thai Bamboo that's mm-hmm. way better. Mm-hmm. And then I, I, I'm like, I wonder if people are doing over at Google. I won't read all these. Those were Yelp. On Google, I just love it. Uh, first one, uh, horrible experience. Please don't go there. These are all one stars. The lady cooking spit on her food. <laughs> she thought I wasn't looking at her. Next one, lady working there is rude. Horrible. Next one, burrito's very bland. Lady, very rude. <laughs> Next one, I tried to call an order. The woman answered, couldn't understand what I wanted. Uh, when I was saying I a pulled pork breakfast burrito, then she hung up on me. <laughs> rude. Enough. Fucking over and over. 99% of the reviews are like, I fucking hate this lady. We should have her, Tacos Reynoso, yeah. uh, cater the Bad Magic Gathering. Oh, my God. And just see if she can pull it off. We'll get her out there. If we could get, get, uh, her, get, get her, Pizza Factory, oh Steve-O's, God. and Drunken Shrimp. <laughs> <laughs> to cater the Bad to cater, cater the bad Magic it, uh, Camp. Well, you know what? If it was just her, there's no way she'd fucking come. Because that place is mobile. And she wouldn't, she wouldn't even fucking Listen, she'd hang up on us if we asked. Hey, what are the chances you can make us uh, 2,000 tacos? Click. Click. Hey, we'd like to give you, um, we'd like to pay you extra to have you make 2,000 tacos. Click. <laughs> How would you like to make $20,000 today? Click. Click. <laughs> hey, we were hoping to try and support your just window fucking slams before you can even say business. <laughs> we really want to help try and support your Click. slam. <laughs> Go away. Go away. Don't park there. Too busy. Move car. And just, and just from having been there, <laughs> she is she's just fucking hateful. Yeah, she she's an angry, hateful person. Someone, something happened. Something happened. <laughs> something happened. But she or makes she a just born evil. fucking taco. She makes a great taco, <laughs> but there's no love. Talk about like, t- those. nothing is made with TLC. It's made with hate. It's made with hate. <laughs> she puts uh, the uh, anger and hate <laughs> into every burrito and every um, street taco. And it does taste pretty good. <laughs> I didn't know hate could taste that good. Yeah, who knew? who knew just... <laughs> Just unadulterated, consistent hate could taste so good. <laughs> if you want to find out, Corner 15th in Sherman. Oh, my God. Taco Reynoso. I, I love the, my friend Doug, who um, actually owns this building. He is He's on the local chamber of commerce, supports businesses. I think one of his things okay. is supporting small businesses. I have only seen him get angry about one business, and it's this one. <laughs> He stopped going here because he like he he did he doesn't say it's not the way he talks he wasn't like fuck that lady but he goes she's horrible <laughs> yeah she's a fucking monster she's a taco monster <laughs> I wouldn't have been surprised if when I went to the Airbnb and I went down in the fucking basement she was fucking hiding in a corner uh-huh. and just hissed at me <laughs> I'm like mom I wouldn't go down don't the cellar don't the fucking, worry I locked the taco monster I, in the basement. I locked the door the Renato taco lady's down there <laughs> and she's extremely angry. <laughs> <laughs> but I did lock the door so she can't get in. <laughs> <laughs> she's gonna if she finds out because every time we do something like this, she's gonna I find she out. Does. She's gonna kill you. Oh my god! She's gonna show up to your house and just if, cover your house in tortillas. If I'm murdered, it's the fucking Renee so Taco Lady did it. <laughs> I will. I'll be more. I, I couldn't be more happy of a way that you died. <laughs> and if it, it, was, it was her killing you. I'd be like, yeah, that's great. That would be it'd be good for the show. Like I'm out of a job. Like things are like right. I, I lost. I lost a friend of mine. But you went out uh, with a bang. <laughs> but, but, but homie went out getting killed by the Taco Lady. If I have to get killed. Anytime soon, I hope it's her. <laughs> I, hope, I hope she murders you me. You wake up in the middle of the night, she's like, move your car. What? <laughs> and she smothers you with a, tor- a tortilla. And starts shoving a bunch of tacos in your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> no! <laughs> uh, okay. okay. That was great. <laughs> I want to see that that MMA fighter, that uh, like that royal uh, fight, whatever they call it in wrestling. when they have The like, Royal Rumble? Royal Rumble. Yeah. Rumble between all of them. We've got Pizza Factory, Reynoso Taco <laughs> Lady, Drunken Shrimp, and then Steve-O. And by the way, we've had listeners call in. If you, if you can record it, it would be great for us to play. But I love that we have had numerous listeners call in to Steve-O's, and when he answers the phone, he, like if it's an out-of-the-area area code, mm-hmm. he's literally been like, what the fuck are you doing calling here? And like hung up. He has been exactly who we thought he was going to be. Absolutely. So he's already, many dummies, many listeners of the show have gotten verbally abused, have gotten, had their lives threatened. Mm-hmm. By, he, he's the craziest so far. She's fucking mean and she doesn't care about her customers. Mm. He's the only guy I've come across so far in the One Star Heroes who consistently threatens the lives of his customers. 
while packing heat. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I, that's going to be hard to top. And has little minions. And has minions. It's going to be hard to top. sends out to chase cars off in the parking lot. Oh, my God. Like, can't even go in. They get scared. They get chased off by other people. Right. That's fun. Fucking insanity. <laughs> it's an escape. Steve-O's escape room. Like, oh, it's just like a different experience. We find out that Steve-O owns fucking Tacos Reneso. That would be great. Oh, my God. And Pizza Factory. And P- Pizza Factory. <laughs> he, it's the umbrella organization. And, like, they actually do have, like, me- training meetings. <laughs> like, he makes these training videos. And did it's you just like, someone today? I he, did. <laughs> customers always wrong well, here here at like whatever their umbrella organization is we like to say fuck customers fuck their families just like just doesn't right. care just so angry towards them here's what i recommend always carry a gun if any customer hints at anything negative if they just feel like they might be negative or if you're just having a bad day immediately threaten their lives <laughs> tell them to never come back <laughs> right their vibes a little bit off point a gun at them point a gun at them that'll get their vibes straight <laughs> <laughs> if no one's around kill them <laughs> <laughs> right. Big old freezer in the back. There's a second freezer. It's always open. Drag the body in there. My motto is: if I can kill my customers, I will. <laughs> or I guess it'd be: if I can get away with killing the customer, I will. And I have. And I have. <laughs> and have. And have. <laughs> comma, comma, <laughs> comma. Period. Uh, okay. Let's look, let's take a look at some some good news. Okay. Okay. Sliver of hope, please. Sliver of hope. I can't stop thinking about Tacos Renee So Lady <laughs> hiding in the fucking basement of that Air- Airbnb. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, I, like, she's a, to, like she's a goblin or something. You can't have customer service like that and really depend on that business to keep you afloat. No, so something, I, something's going on there. She's going to root her way right into fucking prison. It's going to be a time sex story one day. <laughs> it has to be. Like something's going on. She's on the run. <laughs> she doesn't She doesn't want She doesn't want to be seen because she doesn't want to be identified. Right. So there's a fucking wanted poster with her face on it somewhere and it's for something serious. <laughs> At least five murders. <sighs> okay. So here's an example of three women, three mm-hmm. ladies, uh, making the best of a weird situation. So three women said they found out they had the same cheating boyfriend, so they converted a school bus and then went on a road trip together. What? I know. Look at that. How fun is wait, that? Wait, what was the first? They, they had the same cheating, cheating boyfriend. boyfriend. And they, wow. So this dude was playing what all a- of them, so then they just kind of linked up and became friends and went on a fun road trip. What a crazy, like, lemonade out of lemon story. Uh-huh. Good for them. That's what I was saying. Uh, so, Becca King, Abby Roberts, and Morgan Tabor have a lot in common. They describe themselves as free spirited adventurers and fearless risk takers, all obsessed with music and the movie Megamind. Random. They say they also unknowingly had the same boyfriend at the same time. Wow. That'd be a fun thing. Mm-hmm. Following their discovery, rather than uh, succumbing to the sadness, the three young women said they dumped him, saved up money, purchased a school bus, and spent over two months renovating it. On June 25th, the trio took their 30-year-old bus, which they named the BAM bus after their initials. <laughs> Don't name it the Bang bus. <laughs> I know. That's Yeek. what I was thinking. Yikes. Yeah. On a road trip across the western United States into the next chapter of their lives. Uh, so they just went on, they checked out a bunch of different stuff they wanted to, but the gist of the story is they did not let, uh, hoes before bros. Hoes before bros. Just flipped it. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. But yeah, Good so they, for them. they went, yeah, hit a bunch of different places, had a lot of fun together. Uh, and then in a way, thanks to that asshole boyfriend. So really, I mean, he's kind of a good dude. <laughs> kind of a good guy. What, what, he brought them all together. That was his plan the whole time. I'm sure that's what they think. Exactly. <laughs> he was. That was his motivation the whole time. He's like, it's complicated and exhausting to just fuck so many women at all the same time, <laughs> right? To keep three women sexually satisfied. Am I do? I'm do that for me? <laughs> no. What? Kidding me? Are you kidding me? <laughs> Oh, I'm, out, I'm out here breaking my dick off. <laughs> How selfish to, do you think I am? Trying to create some more female friendship. <laughs> he's dating one. I'm he just goes, trying to empower women. In his head, he's like, oh, you're going to love this other girl I'm dating. Oh, my God. You go, hold on, hold on. And then he meets another one. He's like, oh, man. Oh, my gosh. You would love Abby. Right. All right. Hold on. He's like, he gets it all ready. Like, he's just kind of getting him closer and closer. He gets him in one room. He goes, I'm fucking all of you. Uh, goodbye. And he's just like, but you guys are going to love each other. Right, best friends. Bye. And he uses some kind of matchmaker, mm-hmm. like a mm-hmm. friendship matchmaker. And then, he, and then he starts all over again out of the kindness of his heart. Mm-hmm. You know, he risks, you know. Yeah, he has some un- sex. Unwanted pregnancies. He risks, you know, STDs. He risks really complicating his life mm-hmm. just to bring more women together. <laughs> mm-hmm. What a saint. What a guy. What a guy. <laughs> uh, okay, so I'm going to move on. I have one item to show you for To You From Internet. Okay. And it has a tie to earlier in the episode. The internet has all sorts of neat things. Anything you want can be yours. Let's take a peek, together, as a couple, to you, from internet. I have seen this, and it's been a while. Mm-hmm. I, I know it exists. I'm not sure if you do, but it's called the Bumper Dumper. 
the bumper dumper. And it's the original hitch mountable portable uh, portable toilet. I have not seen one of those. That's a great idea, though. I know. So if the runner from the poop story, yeah, just had one of these, uh, or, or found one of these, just hooked to the back of a car, she could take a poop. That's a great idea. This thing is like it's just a five-gallon bucket with a with a toilet lid mm -hmm. and bowl on it that you just uh, hook to a little um, a hitch. yeah trailer mount trailer yeah. hitch. So instead Smart. of like, yeah, it just goes in there. Your little your little square block mount, and then you can just sit on it and take a poop. Right. All that's it's missing genius. is a little, little curtain. But if, I mean, and maybe if you listen to this, you haven't gone camping. Yeah. But there is there is really not a whole lot of situations that are more just awkward than trying to take a shit in the woods. Mm hmm. Because you're trying to find like the perfect. I, I often look. You find the log. I try to find the over log. it. Then you have the the, yeah, the, right. the mud and the moss on your mm -hmm. fucking thighs, and that's weird. But then, and yeah, and the log has to be like the right width to kind of have it work, and it has to have a nice space where there's not like little branches poking out. And my problem with a log all the time is oftentimes those logs, at least around here, are covered in fucking ants. <laughs> And I don't want to be like worried about ants biting my dick <laughs> or, you know, crawling around my butthole. I'm trying to go to the bathroom. So that's, so sometimes what I'll do is I'll try and find a small tree that has like a, uh, where the tree, as far as how like big around it is, is, is like just a nice grabbing width. Uh -huh. So you just grab and then you just kind of do a squat, squat hold hanging off the back of that little tree and then you shit. But if you have like a, uh, a longer shit or your stomach's upset. Yeah. That's the, that's if, problematic. If you're spray painting, oh. your pants are going to get it. Yeah, there's like a lot of problems. And yeah, and you're camping, you spray mm -hmm. paint your pants. There's not like a water source. Because this is like, go fuck yourself. Because this is for like real camping, not like campsite that yeah, are, has spots exactly. that you reserve. Right. And then you have to go use the the have the little bathroom on site. This is like you're just way out in the in the woods where right. there's nothing around, which is the best kind of camping if you can pull it off. And it, it's it's great. I mean, mm -hmm. it weighs 12 pounds, but if you do a lot of camping, yeah, out and about, then the bumper dumper might be for you. And we great, have a, great idea. We'll have a link to it in the episode description. It's kind of great reviews. Good job, bumper dumper people. Powder coated steel tubing frame. Okay. They even, they even powder coated this thing for Good you. Good for them. They didn't have to do that. <laughs> they did. It's extra step. I'll be honest. I, if I if I'm looking at that and it doesn't have a powder co coated steel frame, it just has like a plain old, you know, regular ass steel frame. That's not going to stop me from buying it. <laughs> and they know that, but they're like, yeah, but it's the right thing to do. We got to we got to powder coat that. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. they they someone will notice. Yeah. They got to they're like, I don't know, and they saw that and they're like, okay. Mm -hmm. Like that was the extra layer of like, this is powder coated. They were they, they were ready to go out and then somebody at the company was like, "Whoa, whoa, whoa do you guys powder coat that steel frame?" <laughs> well, no, it's just a toilet. I was like, "Oh, just a toilet? <laughs> just a a bumper dumper to it, you?" Is that how we run things here, Hank? No, it is not. <laughs> We powder coat all of our steel frames, <laughs> even for the bumper dumper. <laughs> I picture a wife on the phone, like calling back to the husband mm -hmm. before a camping trip, like, no, they got a bumper dumper here. Is it powder coated? <laughs> uh, yeah. Get it. <laughs> get it. <laughs> Sold. Grab it. Sold. <laughs> Make sure if you get the unpowder coated, just fucking don't come back. <laughs> don't come back from the store tonight, babe. Oh, good for them. Uh, okay, junk mail. Let's roll it. Zach? Zach! <laughs> It's junk mail. Okay, so we do have a couple stories for the a, junk mail today. That was the first time Zach was a little slow on the trigger. It's been a, yeah, it's been a while. He's been he had, a, he had a good run there. Sometimes he does it on purpose. He had a DiMaggio like streak. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so our first piece of junk mail is coming in from Dummy Alex, who writes to start. My name is Alex Westberg. I've been a big fan of Dan for a long time, and I'm a huge fan of everything Bad Magic. Oh, thank you very much, Alex. I'm writing in to tell my story. I was diagnosed with colon cancer the same oh, day shit. that you guys released your one-year anniversary show. It was funny and hard to listen to at the same time, especially with Dan talking about the colonoscopy tube, uh, looking for his lost credit card. Oh, my God. Just the things we talk about. Yeah, right. Uh, only because this Monday was uh, was before the anniversary show, and I had an endos uh, endoscopy and a uh. colonoscopy, which was how they found my cancer. Man. So that Wednesday, the, the day your one-year anniversary show was released, when I found out I had cancer. So later that day, me and my wife were holding each other, crying at the end of the bed, just, mm -hmm. you know, holding each Fuck. other. Stopped for a second, looked at her. She said, what's wrong? I looked her in the eyes and said, at least I get to listen to this. We done today. We both started laughing and then crying again. I didn't end up listening to the anniversary show until that Friday. Uh, the first day I went back to work after my scopes, but it really helped me laugh and cry and then laugh and cry again. But it did get me through a little bit of a time, a little bit at a time. It helped me uh, laugh it off. Not much to worry about, even though there's all these things going on. So in that moment, we gave him a little bit of relief. Even though it's a daily battle, I could have at least forgot about it for that day. Uh, it was good. It was bad, happy, sad, everything all at once. I will never forget the laughs I had 
while I was still so scared for my life, everything looks good at this point. Okay. Looking at surgery, it may be not chemo and radiation, okay. but time will only tell. And that's why I'm, you know, uh, or time will only tell on that as I email you now. Okay, but it looks good. He said. He right. said. He said that that it does look good. Right. So the doctor doesn't seem worried, which is I was which like, please give us good news. Thank you guys for everything you do. I look forward to listening to Is We Dumb for a long, long time. Yes. Well, thank you very much, Alex. Yeah, thanks, Alex. Man, sorry. Uh, Sorry you had that terrible news, but also good for you for getting your exam and getting checked because if you wouldn't have got it when you did, it could have been much worse news. It, it would have been. Right. It would have just progressed. Right. So hopefully that checkup saved your life. Absolutely. And yeah. I just love that uh, the things, like the to think about us talking about mm -hmm. uh, just all the various things that we talk about. Yeah. And to know that like it's helping somebody through something that serious. Yeah, it's awesome. Is just like that relationship <laughs> yeah. is so funny to me and it's amazing. This, this is inspiring me. It's like, I worry about like, you know, some of our fans, like, are they okay? And I want to, I want to throw this out there. I want to offer just for free. I'm going to start checking fans' buttholes. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, you're going to have a, an Is We Dumb, like little colonoscopy? I just, I'm going to look into getting a little, like some tools in the meantime. I mean, I think the best way, my fingers are only so long to I've really kind of feel around. It. I've got an eye for it. I've got an eye for it, but you got to get in there. I don't know how much, I, how far I can reach my fingers. I'll, I'll fuck your butthole, mm. right? Uh, to check for <laughs> disease, to check for cancer. And, <laughs> and shoes. And shoes. I'll yeah. check your butthole for shoes with my dick. <laughs> Just until I can figure out more training. Then I'll, but, but at least I can be like, while I'm fucking, and then while I'm fucking your butt, I do want you to ask me, like, do you feel any polyps? Do you feel anything unusual? <laughs> and, I'll, and I might at first be like, just quiet. Just wait, you're ruining it for me. Uh -huh. But then when I'm done, right. I'll give you a thorough kind of review mm. of how I felt about your butthole. And I think, you know, if you're healthy or not. <laughs> I just picture this weird mm -hmm. uh, makeshift situation yeah. where you've got like a, a, a camera, like a little GoPro scotch tape to the <laughs> tip of your dick. So you're just, like, you're just fucking our listeners. <laughs> Tell them to be quiet so you can come. Like what a I get a little camera looking thing and then people notice it like is that plugged into anything? Don't don't worry about it. It's not even it's not even on it doesn't even work. This battery this battery will last five minutes, that's plenty of time. <laughs> I won't be here for over five minutes, you kidding me? I already came. Uh, Dr. Loophole. <laughs> Dr. fucking poop hole loophole. <laughs> oh, okay, man. we have one more story and then we'll wrap up this show. Okay. Uh, this one coming in from Dummy Mandy. Hello, dummies. I wanted to take a quick break from the stupidity to share a not dumb moment I had recently. It feels like ages ago, I recommended Time Suck to my brother, who uh, we don't see each other much or talk on the phone very often, and I'm never allowed to see you know, if he listens. I'm okay, never able yeah. to check in, so never followed up on that. Last night, we were talking on the phone about this, uh, you know, that, that crazy taste in women. He just has a, he's not, he's not doing very good, according to her. Okay. He okay, thinks he's terrible. Okay. I uh, need to get out of this relationship with the Jody Arias-like crazy chick. <laughs> ah, that's, yeah, that's a lot of crazy. At some point, the best advice uh, was, just don't. He laughed and said, oh man, you've been listening to this, be done? Oh, nice. It was a really great moment to realize my brother and I had a connection to something even though we were so far apart. We had some great laughs about the Would You Rathers, the One Star Heroes. I'm excited that we now have something fun and common to talk about. Mm -hmm. I plan on calling him after Is We Dumb airs and asking him about the Would You Rather question. Mm -hmm. If this gets read on air, could you please give a shout out to my brother Jamie? He's having a rough go of it right now. He fell through a ceiling working at an HVAC job. Jesus. Jeez. A shot from the uh, a shout out from the dummies would cheer him up a bit. Also, if you give him a just a don't about his relationship, that might go a, a long way. Okay, Jamie. Yeah, you might want to get out of that crazy relationship. Jamie. Yeah, just don't find find uh, a nice lady who fucks like a psychopath. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, well, he might be in that right now. That's probably why he's in it. Who fucks? Oh yeah, that's crazy sex. Right. Oh, that's what I thought immediately. <laughs> when you're like like a Jody Aries type, I'm like, well yeah, like because the sex is so good. Right. But you can find a nice girl who is like that in bed. Oh okay. I was gonna yeah. say that's gonna. Be, I thought you were saying like you need to find yourself one that does that. And it's like no, I think that's why he's no, trapped no, in it no, right no. now. No no I I just want to like a uh, little uh, PSA that like you know there's that whole stereotype or whatever cliche, but like uh, the, the the girl who's the craziest, it's like the best in bed. There's also plenty of like very mentally well very stable uh, people who also enjoy freaky sex or whatever. Mm. So you you can have it both both ways. <laughs> you can. Yeah. The odds are against you. It's, it's, it's right it's, in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> it's easier <laughs> to find the better sex. Right. With a pile of crazy. Yeah. But, but that's not that's not the only place good sex exists. <laughs> right. Right? right. Just, just put a little more work into it, Jamie. Uh, okay, last thing. She goes, uh, thank you so much for everything the Bad Magic does. Plenty of people have said it before, but you guys really have built an amazing community that oh, brings people nice. together. Three out of five stars. Wouldn't change a thing. Mandy from Michigan. Thanks, Mandy from Michigan. Yeah, thank you guys so much for writing in. That's mm -hmm. our fucking show. That's our show. That's it. Number 61. Number 61. All done. 
All done. Zach Flannery. Yes, sir. Producing, directing. Thank you, kind sir. I did do that. Thank you. Other Zach. Zach Cohen. Creating uh, some of the custom music beds for the show. Logan Keith. Mm -hmm. Heard you out there laughing. Best merch in the podcast game. We have that new alternative Is We Dumb t-shirt right now in the store. You can grab that at badmagicmerch.com and also at iswedumb.com. And if you want to join the private Facebook group, Is We Dummies, search for that. Moderated by Liz Hernandez and the All Seeing Eyes. And then our main socials, you have Instagram and Facebook. Just search for Is We Dumb. YouTube channel, Bad Magic Productions, all that stuff. And something you want to see on the show, you can email that into dumb at iswedumb.com. Uh, and all the emails and contact stuff that I've listed right now is also posted in the episode description. Can I also offer your free proctology services, or are you going to not do that? I'll watch. But you won't do it. No. I, you won't fuck our fans' butts no, I, to help them. Mm, hear me out. Wow. I, what no, a stingy guy. I'm the one that yeah. is, I'll, I'll be there to set up the appointments. Okay. Uh, I'll, You'll be, schedule, I'll be the scheduler. And I, I'm, I'll be the fluffer. Because uh, oh. I'll get in there. I'll make sure that everything is loose and ready for you. <laughs> I'm not gonna tell them. I'm not gonna tell you what I'm gonna use to do that. Okay, so you're gonna warm their butts up mm. to get them ready for the exam. I'm a butt warmer. <laughs> That's what I am. Okay, I'm a human butt warmer. What a word, team. Right. And then when you're yeah. gone, I'll come back in. I'll make sure that I, I cool their butt down. Oh. I'll be a butt cooler so that when they leave, it's, they feel fresh. God, what a full service treatment <laughs> you get from us. It's like a, like a barber shop, but buttholes. I love. From what I understand, a lot of podcast hosts are not willing to fuck their fans' butts. Mm-hmm. They're just, I don't know, they're not dedicated. Yeah, they're not in it to win it. They don't care about their health. <laughs> no, they never have. They never have. So <laughs> if you're listening to some other podcast out there, like, I think I kind of like this other one too. Will they, oh! fuck, will they fuck you and help you find oh, cancer? Oh, like Joe Rogan. <laughs> will Joe Rogan fuck your butt to make sure you don't, or you're healthy? No, no way. Then why do you care about him? Right. And then he doesn't care about you. Yeah, he's not warm on your butt. He's not he's fucking not, your butt. He's not, he's not cooling your butt, your butt down. down. God. See? So hmm. these are just things that I want you as the listener to consider. Yeah. This is something to put together. <laughs> All right, we're going to wrap up with a neat fact this week. Are you okay, ready? I'm ready. Zach? Wow. Neat fact. And uh, purposefully, just a lot of butt butt theme today. Oh. But did you know Blink-182 decided to incorporate their <laughs> band under the name Poo Poo Butt, LLC, <laughs> as they thought it would be funny to hear accountants use their name in important conversations on a daily basis. <laughs> ah, that is very funny. And uh, as we move forward with uh, Poo Poo Butt, LLC... <laughs> 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 it's guaranteed they do that. They have to. They have to to communicate. I'm sure, like, they, I'm sure they try to call it like PPB. Mm -hmm. And they're like, I don't know what you're talking about. What are you talking about? Uh, Poo Poo Butt LLC. <laughs> Poo -poo -butt. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Oh, yeah, that's our that's our band. We found a great loophole for Poo Poo Butt LLC <laughs> for your taxes. Right. Okay, I'm listening. I'm listening. I'm listening. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. That's it. 61. 61. Goodbye, everybody. Yes, we Magic Productions.